Right. <clears throat> Wait for some people to start showing up. Cause... Oh, all right. D. Williams is here already. Oh, no, all no, I got is your voice technology. right now. Hold on. Wait, there we go. No, that's all right. I'll go. I think I'll go ahead and do an intro for us anyway while you're getting ready. Uh, welcome to Book Talk on Book Talk. I am your host, Ricky Treon, and uh, there she is. Dee Hi, Williams hey. is one of our uh, one of our guests today. We've got a got a really good panel set up with a lot of awesome stuff going on. Uh, Ali Dane is about to join us too. Uh, so we'll get her on. Uh, I'll introduce Dee Williams. She uh, released a book today. She writes MC Romances, and so she's going to talk to us all about her newest release, which is awesome. And then uh, Allie's coming on. She's a good friend of the show, and uh, she okay. probably narrates about half the half the books you've read here on uh, because of TikTok. So <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so we've got those two. Uh, DJ Krimmer is an author uh, who just released a romance novel. She's going to be joining us, and uh, author... Maggie uh, Dunbrock, who uh, has a new release, a new fantasy release coming out on Friday. So um, we've, uh, like I said, we've got a uh, a lot of cool stuff for everyone to talk about. Uh, you know, everyone's releasing new stuff and I am not. So I am eternally jealous of all of the production uh, that everyone has on Book Talk that I do not. Um, but uh, since we have you two uh, here already, let's start out with with D and uh, tell us about uh, tell us about the new release today because uh, you know that's, the new uh, release did not happen because Miss oh, D no. got the flu and had to delay it until the twenty seventh of the month. Oh goodness! Well, you know I was sick last week, so I definitely I uh, I know I know how that goes. Going Another around. time, sometimes I just have going around. Mm -hmm. It was like edits were in front of me, and I just had brain fog. I like I. Couldn't remember the English language. I'm like, what is this? Mm -hmm. I was like, this is not happening. <laughs> but well, uh, and that's how it goes. And that's one of the, yeah, and that's one of the things about you know the um, you know doing creative stuff is that you know some some jobs you can feel kind of junky and go and power through and you know no harm no foul. But if you're if you're writing or obviously if you're you know uh, narrating or even uh, if you're editing and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, if if you are not in a good headspace, then you can actually, you know, do bad things. If you're trying, if you're trying to progress on your work, you can actually edit in errors and all kinds of stuff. So uh, it's almost always better to wait. Hey, the simplest word you forget how to spell. It's just like it's just, the knowledge is no longer there. Something you've known since kindergarten is just gone. Yep. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. We are. Uh, I, I don't believe that. Oh, oh, and my boss Charles right. sent us some lights. Uh, I don't believe Maggie has uh, sent me an invite. I've been looking, uh, so I know that she's supposed to be coming on, uh, and I haven't seen anything from uh, DJ. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look back and make sure but no i haven't seen uh Hi, said she Hi, sent a she sent a message which uh you know uh is not always helpful because you know she has to actually come in and uh um Ooh, a crayon. i know oh show. my gosh thank uh, you so much for all the gifts so, so 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 ali uh while i'm checking and seeing if we can get other people in the live why don't you tell us what uh what project you are currently working on. Yeah. Um, well, uh, in post-production right now, it's in the final stages. I just sent off the final pickups, which are like the little corrections that we do for Pride Pancakes in Paris by Emmy J. Holland. I'm narrating that one under my other pseudonym for kind of like spicier stuff. Um, so that one's narrated by Andrea May, but that's that's still me. Um, and then currently in production is Over the Moon by Sarah Anderson or S.E. Anderson, um, which is a sci-fi wizard of Oz retelling so that's what I'm currently in production and then I've got a couple more things on the docket as well so really uh busy these past couple months ever since January hit it's been like go 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 <laughs> yeah all right well and uh, so let's see I just invited uh, uh author DJ Krimmer and uh hopefully 
um, Maggie will uh, uh, come onto the live, and so I can I can get her on. Uh, so yeah, we'll have five of six because I you know the host can only have six people on, so we're uh, we're going to be pretty full, and that's always makes for makes for a great show. Uh, let's see. Hey, hey there she is. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> We are all doing well, and so um, you, uh, I, and, and hopefully it actually went went through for you. But you just released a, uh, a romance novel called Atlas. Is that right? I did yesterday. All right, and and so you know, how did how did that go? Did you have any hiccups, or uh, everything goes planned? Well, this is book number five, so I think I think by now I've got it down pat. <laughs> It all seemed to work out really well. I was I was very impressed. So I wish I could say the same. Book fifteen got pushed by two weeks. <laughs> oh, got- all right, and it's not all right to that. All right, to, uh, Maggie, I sent her the uh, invite, okay. so she's uh, um, she's coming on. Sorry. And so and, and so she has a book uh, called uh, Tears of Silver Shadows that. Uh, should be releasing Friday, hopefully. Hey, how are you, Maggie? Hey, how are you? Sorry. No, it's all right. It's all right. You're sideways, darling. Oh, okay. There, ah, we, there go. we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, is your release still uh, still on for Friday? It is. Yes. For uh, Tears of Silver Shadows. All right, and so you write? Uh, do you write primary primarily fantasy? It looks like. Yep, I'm fantasy, uh, dark fantasy, and grim dark. All right, and if I understood right, yeah, your new release is going to be uh, um, a take on um, either Roman or Greek mythology. Uh, yep, uh, Greek mythology. This book um, follows the traditional story of the moon goddess Saloon um, and her mortal lover. Except I uh, twisted it um to fit my world and what i wanted i added some creature myths in there too so it's fun <laughs> right very nice excellent that sounds good and and you know be, because you all have uh, a lot of uh, books that you are releasing or or about to release and all that stuff um you know have you already uh and, and you can all answer this if you want have you already planned out uh, most of what everything you're going to be doing and releasing and working on in 2023? Is that already pre-planned or are you still kind of trying to, to figure stuff out? Uh, we can go ahead and start with, uh, with D Williams up there. My, mine are planned. Um, the timetable has shifted slightly because of the delay of this last book, but um, hopefully by the time the June book rolls around, I'll be back on track. But yeah, they're all planned out because I've got, a book coming out, a book signing event. And then they switch off starting in June all the way to the end of the year. So, oh, wow. So be busy. <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, DJ, how about you? Uh, yeah, I have every... If it all works out um, and there's no hiccups, everything should... I should have planned until the end of 2024. Wow. So, yeah. That's impressive. Nice. Maggie? Um, I have um, this one on Friday and everything's planned out to the end of the year with two more releases and um, a couple book tours as well. Oh, excellent. And, and uh, Allie, you know, do you, uh, how many, how many projects do you have lined up for the rest of the year? Um, I try to, right now I'm booked through the end of April and into May. And so, and I try, some people will book out, you know, as far as like through the end of the year, I get pretty nervous doing that. You know, you guys were talking about like illness and stuff at the beginning and, you know, I just have to be very conscientious of that and, and knowing that I'm going to need to build in time for vocal rest or, you know, my children are going to cough germs in my eyeballs and I'm going (laughs) to, you know, inevitably get sick and lose my voice. Mm -hmm. So as much as I would love to like book myself out through the end of the year, I have this like horrible anxiety about like, if, if one book gets delayed, it's like a train piling up because then it like pushes everything back. So right now I'm booked. I usually book out like three or four books at a time. So um, I'm booked out through half the year, but I'm already kind of starting to think about like what my summer is going to look like and what we're going to um, figure out. Yes, they always cough in the eyeballs, like directly oh, cool. in there. <laughs> Blanca. 
you, you know, um, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, since we got some people joining us, we love it. And, uh, you know, most of the people already know this and I say it every time, but, uh, um, you know, tapping that screen and giving us likes that, uh, that uh, helps us get more exposure, helps more people come mm -hmm. in and helps, uh, you know, spread the, uh, the message that our, our independent creators here are, are trying to um, get out there to the world. And that's what the show's about. That's what the platform's about is helping everybody uh, promote their stuff. In addition to just having a great conversation, um, we, we, we've had, uh, some people, uh, I believe, I believe they were all my boss, Charles, uh, give us gifts. You know, we always appreciate that. Those, uh, um, you know, none of us are millionaires here. So all of those gifts are, uh, deeply, deeply appreciated. Um, and so, uh, you know, one, one thing I know that, uh, a couple of you, uh, 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 Dean, Maggie, you talked about, um, the, you know, tours and events and stuff and D, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Tanya told me that you actually help organize book events. Is that right? Uh, is that a, sort of a side hustle that you do for other authors? Or, Well, I live in a really big city, and Chicago really only has the one book event a year. And mm -hmm. um, I wanted to create a little competition. So we're in together with a couple of local authors, and we are doing our first book event April of next year, Cuffed in Chicago. April 2024. That's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, because it's the bigger events like that, you always see the same, it's the same authors, like mm -hmm. indie authors, new narrators, vendors, unless you know someone, you're not getting into them. So mm -hmm. we wanted to offer an alternative. So yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And actually, if you want to message me later, uh, we have an author at Blue Handle where I work. Uh, who has a strong foothold in Chicago. So uh, actually uh, we have two, we have one that's going to be released later this year and the one that released last year. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely want to know about your event and see if we can get them, uh, um, get them to participate. So yeah, message me after we're done and uh, you know, I'll pass your information along to, um, to uh, Madison who helps coordinate all that stuff. And uh, we'll make sure that your authors are on our radar and, and, and you know, COVID really put a stop to, so, you know, all kinds of stuff really went into turmoil. And I know me as an author, you know, my first novel released in late 2018. And I really felt like I was just starting to build that up and make the contacts with the events and stuff like that. And then everything for almost almost three years just kind of went away. So, you know, I spent last year building that back up and I feel like I did a good job with it. And then, of course, I didn't really get much writing done. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of um, you know, you spend too much time on one thing and the other one suffers and it's, uh, it's never, uh, never a, a great thing to, you know, um, go too far one way. Um, so, so Maggie, what, uh, you mentioned a book tour, um, you know, is that something you set up yourself and where are you going to be going and what are you going to be doing? Um, so I'm actually part of, um, anytime author promotions, um, for Salem, Massachusetts, um, their promotion, getting witchy with it. I signed up for it last year. Um, so it's me and like, I think four or 500 other authors that are going to get together at the Boston Peabody Marriott, um, September 16th and 17th this year. And everyone's going to have a good time and sign a bunch of books and lots of giveaways. So, um, I have another one planned too, but I can't remember the name of it right now. <laughs> no, it's... Awesome. That's all right. Uh, so, um, DJ, do you have any any book events uh, that you're uh, planning on going to this year? This year, um, I'm actually going to Salem. So, I'm um, I'm one of the authors going to Salem uh, for the get what you with it. Excellent. Um, yeah. So, I'm pretty excited. It's actually my first event, so I'm pretty excited. I've got uh, I've got two uh, events planned for this year. One of them is uh, an award ceremony. One of them is a convention. Um, the award ceremony is the Paincraft Awards in uh, Louisiana in April, and then uh, in late May, early June is Thriller Fest in New York. Uh, and I, I try to go to a few more every year, but uh, um, here's whenever I go to Thriller Fest, I have to really cut down because that one is about two or three times as expensive as the rest of them just because it's in New York. So, I mean, that's uh, um, you always yeah, got to plan yeah. out yeah. for that. Um, so, so, you know, what uh, – what made you take that leap, DJ, into going into your first uh, into, into your first book event? Uh, did you, um, you know, want to get uh, just promotion for your own book? Did you want to meet other authors? What uh, What are you looking forward to? 
Um, I mean, now, yeah, um, I am looking forward to, I have more of a following now than I did when I signed up. I signed up before I think even my first book was published, um, just on a whim, like, hey, I'm going to have all these books. I have these great big plans. Um, and the the people at the event, they were really cool, and they let me in, and um yeah, now it's like I have a following. People are like, yeah, I'm coming to see you. I'm coming to see you. But back then it was just like I wanted to go and see all these people that I wanted to be like and just like imitate them. You know, I just I never expected to actually, you know, go and have like books on the table or anything. I just wanted to sit there and look at everybody. So <laughs> it's it's completely different now that's a dream right like when you've been like a guest at like so many of them to like finally get to go and like yeah have a table yeah yeah like I would get I have been to events before and I just look around and I'm like in awe like oh my god just to be you it would just be amazing <laughs> so it's re- it's really weird I'm pretty excited that's awesome yeah getting to talk to authors who are where you are and figure out how they got there and have them give you uh, that kind of insight is invaluable. So I, I, I tell people all the time that uh, going to book events live, if you can, um, and, you know, interacting with those authors and getting, you know, that kind of insight is absolutely invaluable. And um, so I, I'm really happy to hear that you all are going to be getting out there doing that stuff. Um, you know, uh, Ali, I've asked some of the readers before, you know, what, what, if there's a comparable thing to what they do, what, uh, you know, do, do you go to stuff like that? Are there uh, conventions you like to go to as a narrator to uh, either meet authors that you want to narrate for or anything like that? Absolutely. Um, so this May, I will be, I'm technically a vendor, so but I'm going to have like a table with the authors and everything. So a lot of times they kind of mix the author and um, narrator events, although there are some audio specific ones. Um, I think there was one that happened in Chicago. I'm totally blanking on the name. Um, but I will be um, an attending narrator at Books, Gowns, and Crowns in May. So if you're going to Tampa, oh. Florida... Um, in May, I will see you there. Um, but uh, before that, like I was a big book con atten- attender. Like I would, I went to a polycon like four years in a row. I went to Love in Vegas last year. Um, I've been to uh, Shameless Con in Florida. So like that's I love to go as a reader. Um, and and then sometimes I end up. Yeah, I was podcasting before I was narrating. So a lot of times I was meeting up with authors to be like, Hey, like, do you want to come on and like be interviewed on the podcast? And then now it's, it's a little different. It's kind of like sharing the audiobooks and sharing samples and making connections with people. And so you can find a good partnership. Thanks. Oh, what an awesome heart. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Blanca. We appreciate that. And I know that uh, uh, Colleen, who is uh, my, my boss's wife, she sent us all some gifts. So, uh, we, we really appreciate all Thank that. And oh my goodness, fun. all the hearts just keep going. That's, uh, that's great. Um, so, uh, you know, well, one of the big conversations, you know, that's still going on with both narrators and authors is, um, you know, the use of artificial intelligence. As a matter of fact, I got, uh, I'm a member of the International Thriller Writers because I write, uh, you know, in the crime fiction, mystery thriller type of genre. So, uh, you know, they sent out an email to us wanting us to take a survey about what we think uh, about AI and how it's affecting the industry. Uh, I haven't taken it yet, so I'm not real sure what all questions are on there. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm sure it's going to be kind of the same questions that we're all um, that we're all asking ourselves. And I think right now it's probably hitting uh, the, the the voice acting world and the narration maybe a little bit more than than the writers. So, uh, Ali, I'll go to you. Um, you know, wh- catch us up if you can on the latest what you guys are all talking about. I know there might, I think there are petitions that are going around that maybe even a couple of you uh, have linked to in your website. So, uh, you know, give us, uh, give us the latest update on that. Well, um, we had a major win this week um, because uh, I'm, I'm currently non-union. I haven't earned my union status yet, um, but um, I have several friends that are in the union. Um, We have been signing petitions and we've been, um, 
emailing and contacting SAG-AFTRA um, to say, hey, this is this really is a potential violation of our rights as performers. Um, and so SAG-AFTRA went to bat for really, you know, all voice actors um, and ended up um, in communication with Find Away Voices and Spotify. Um, and they have made it very clear that the it's not possible for authors to um, give away the rights to our voices for machine learning. So they've put a complete halt to that currently um, with Findaway. Um, and so they're kind of currently it's just a stopgap at the moment. And hopefully they're going to negotiate um, some fair use and appropriate compensation for that and, and make sure that, you know, we retain the rights to, you know, our own voice performances. Um, so that's kind of where it is at, at the moment. Um, so we're really happy that that happened this week, um, you know, and we appreciate everybody, you know, signing petitions and emailing Findaway and authors emailing and saying, no, I do not give permission for my narrator's voice to be used for this because um, we didn't know if this was something that was going to get reversed. So we appreciate all the support there um, and all of our authors going to bat for us. So that's kind of this the current status. And we're really hoping that they, you know, it ends up being a thing where they they don't get permission to um, use our, our performances at all. I mean, I don't think I would ever consent to that. So. Oh, oh, for, for sure. And, and, and if I'm understanding right, you know, the big thing that's happening right now is that they're trying to take, you know, voice actors, uh, you know, human voices and their cadence and all the inflections. And they're trying to use that to train the AI voices to replicate that and make it to where we as listeners wouldn't be able to tell uh, which, you know, if they get that, done well enough would basically get rid of the need for human narrators, uh, which, you know, it's not, is a terrible, almost like, you know, Skynet type of a goal. Uh, but, you know, for the business people, I can see how that would be huge for them. Uh, mm -hmm. Dee, you've been shaking your head a lot. You, you know, are, you know, what, to, you know, from the author side, what is it, you know, that you are uh, seeing with this and, and how do you feel about what's going on? It's scary. There's actually one of the programs um, before the, um, the audiobook stuff even came up it's actually writing for you as well mm -hmm. so it, it's just scary that you know they're just trying to take the human element out of everything um i it, and i'm shaking my head yes because every time you i i think about it the first thing that comes up is it's skynet like every it's all <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this movie. I know how it ends. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy. Um, they keep saying that there's nothing original out there, but they're taking all the originality out of it as well. So, you know, oh, I. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Okay. No, I just want to jump in and like, we don't, I just want to say like, we don't know for sure that that is exactly what they were doing with our voices. I mean, that's the worry, right? That's the yeah. worry that they were going to take our voices and do that. And I think that we can draw some like conclusions from that. Um, but part of the SAG after email was like, please be careful with like spreading misinformation and make it seem like they, that was the intention for it. We genuinely don't know what the intention is, but that's definitely what the worry is, is that's exactly what they were doing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. which we've seen it exactly that happen with art and with writing. So it is a logical conclusion to come to. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard that there were going to be, uh, you know, newspapers and blog sites that were going to let AI, you know, do uh, make those posts for them. And then like, I think some newspapers, uh, I'm not sure who it was or, or what organization was talking about having them write, uh, um, because they can do more quickly sports game uh, wrap ups, you know, we call them gamers uh, as sports writers have AI do those and then, and then print those, put those on the websites. And it's like, I mean, that's awful because, you know, I, there's no reason you would know this unless you, you uh, unless you know it, but uh, high school football season, there's a cottage industry of freelancers. And these are people who do anything from every walk of life who go and attend these high school football games and they keep statistics and they write, um, really short, really fast game stories and send them out to local newspapers, to major newspapers. And, you know, some people make, uh, you know, uh, you know, a hundred, 200 bucks a week, you know, for a happy year doing this. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's employee freelance people too. So if they can just get the AI bots to do all that, that's a lot of people who are not getting that kind of supplemental income, let alone actual, you know, professional sports writers. Uh, and, and like, you know, that was, you know, one of the first things that came to my mind, uh, whenever they actually started doing that. 
Um, I can't imagine an AI writing an entire novel, but, you know, we, we definitely need to stop them before that technology gets that far, which, uh, you know, I think is, you know, um, what a lot of people may not realize is that, you know, if we let the technology develop far enough, they will be able to tell full 90,000, 100,000 word stories. And if readers can't tell the difference, they are going to go with the books that cost le the least, and those are going to be the ones generated by the AI. Uh, and that's, you know, that is definitely a scary thought. Um, you brought up art, and just real quickly, I, w I did speak to an artist who uh, isn't against AI as much as I thought, you know, that person might be. And granted, they don't do book cover art, but they do other art, and they do, uh, you know, uh, some freelance course from time to time at the, um, you know, Blue Handle. And he's, he, this person uses it as a tool to help inspire him and to help him, you know, uh, hone his ideas that he then uses to create art and then uh, produce it and get paid. So, you know, that is sort of a good use maybe of, of the AI. And we just need to make sure that it doesn't replace humans. So, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, a more nuanced argument maybe than, uh, than I've heard some people make it, not, not anyone here. And, you know, there's uh you know, we're all, uh, you know, down in the trenches, but there are definitely some pundits out there who are going very reactionary. And I always play the, uh, I always play the devil's advocate. Uh, real quick, I do want to thank uh, our moderators because uh, I didn't before. Uh, Tanya Celtic, blue to you. Um, uh, you know, she helps coordinate this whole show. She gets everyone together. She moderates the comments, and we also have she reads down there tonight, I believe, as well. Uh, you know, because we're going to have a big audience. We have so many great panelists. Uh, so. They're down there doing the work because uh, thankfully we have a big enough audience that I'm not able to just do it on the fly as I'm talking to y'all. So um, needed to need to thank them. And she's the one, uh, Tanya. Uh, oh, who did we lose? We lost somebody. E. Oh, well, I will uh, I will wait for her to see if she gets back on to here. Uh, there we go. OK, she's uh, looks like she's back. Uh, but anyway, Tanya is the one who pushed me to get the, the background, which uh, uh, some of you who watch the show regularly will notice that I don't have the normal, um, you know, uh, Chinese restaurant thing looking thing behind me. Uh, and, and while I, that is not an actual bookcase that is behind me, uh, that is uh, a, uh, a backdrop that we bought. And uh, Tanya shipped me the uh, um, the frame, so we got uh, something that looks a little better back there. And it's uh, it's not green screen. And uh, Tanya uh, says it looks beautiful and. Uh, uh, I do agree that it lo it looks better than what I had before. So uh, appreciate her pushing me and letting me know that uh, this was even out there and it was not even all that expensive. Um, I know people who've gotten green screens and to get a, a good green screen that works really well and doesn't have wrinkles and stuff in it is pretty costly. But this right here, totally affordable. So uh, I, I am very glad that we have upped the production value. Uh, and so Tony's to thank for that. Um, you know, getting back to, uh, um, you know, the, the, the writing and, and the, and the uh, creativity that we all do, uh, we talked about, you know, how you guys plan everything out, you have the schedules, you, you do a lot of releases, uh, you know, I did want to uh, have each of you weigh in on how you uh, do your time management, because, uh, you know, I don't think any of us do this full time, and so we all work around day jobs and stuff. You know, what, what, what do you do if you can talk a little bit about how you schedule your time to uh, get so much done? Because it's not just the writing. It's also, you know, coordinating the editing and the cover design and uploading and working with Amazon and whoever else you distribute with. So there's so much work. You're running a small business. What do you do to uh, make sure that you can manage your time and get everything done? Let's, uh, let's start with uh, DJ. I don't know. <laughs> a pray. group of authors is called Correct. a procrastination. Right, <laughs> yeah. Jennifer, I love you. <laughs> we just pray. We just pray. Um. Yeah. So, um, with me, um, I, I'm a mom, and I work six days a week, and I'm an author. So, um, it's very much a I run on very little sleep and um I was an excellent crammer in college so I learned uh how to just kind of do a lot in a little amount of time um so for instance um 
this year I should have about eight books published at about eighty to ninety thousand words a book. Um with probably another six to eight next year. Um, and that's usually done. Wow. That's usually done uh, with me just spending the hours to 10 to 3 a.m. working on them. 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. working on them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, my my routine is not the one that you all want to follow. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I tell people too. There, yeah, are better, don't, there are don't better people out there to answer that question <laughs> all right uh maggie what, what do you uh what, what's your schedule like how do you how do you fit in your time to be you know uh, an author in addition to the rest of your life um i wait till the very last second to do everything <laughs> oh. also <laughs> yeah yeah uh i'm also a mom um uh my husband's in uh the military um so we're constantly busy or going and doing um I also work from home um I'm a formatter um for self-publishing um so when I work I could work six to eight hours depending on if my kids are not tearing something up or I could work no hours so I really don't know how to manage my time I can't even manage my life so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying the best I can All right. <laughs> and uh, and D, uh, how about you <sighs> you guys are gonna hate me <laughs> um I'm actually retired um well. I'm, <laughs> I'm retired <laughs> um my husband is a travel nurse so he spends anywhere from eight to 13 weeks away from home and my youngest child is going to be 15 this year and is self-sufficient. Um, so I, I'm so jealous. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. Um, <laughs> so I, um, I, I am a little bit of a procrastinator. But um, yeah, coffee and grace and um, I'll sleep when I'm dead. But I, that's how I pushed out so many books in such a short time. That's so. awesome. But however, my books aren't as lengthy. I think my longest book is only about 55,000 words. So they're quick reads, but they all come out pretty much on a rapid release schedule. So like every other month now. Mm. So. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and Allie, you know, obviously, you know, it's a little different uh, what you do versus what the writers do. But, you know, what, uh, what sort of hours do you work in and, and, you know, how do you fit it in? Um, team no sleep over here. Um, so yeah, I, I also work a day job and, and I'm freelancing as an audiobook narrator and, um, you know, basically the quietest time of day is like after 830 at night, I put my kids to bed. Um, so I, I don't do any daytime recording. So it's basically, I'm like nocturnal and don't sleep very much um, when I'm like have like some major deadlines. Um, something that I added recently is I I hired a PA and that has helped me a lot because like I just could not keep up with like my social media posts and like she helps like keep my schedule. Um, and then I also use some pretty elaborate um, Excel spreadsheets and also Airtable. I don't know if anybody's familiar with like the Airtable. Uh, I love it. And so I basically have a very elaborate spreadsheet of like, what do I have that's like in prep? And like, what do I have that's accepted, but hasn't been moved and, and everything's color coded and, and my PA is able to see like where I'm at, you know, in all of my processes. So she'll be like, Hey, like you said, you were going to be at this point with this book on this date. And it looks like you haven't moved it yet. Like you good. Like, do you need help? Um, and yeah, and I just try to build in like lots and lots of buffer time, but basically just a <laughs> lot of time late, super late nights recording and lots of tea and caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I tend to, I tend to come alive and do my best, uh, you know, my best sort of uh, either creative work or research, uh, you know, sort of studying stuff uh, at night. Um, but yeah, dur during the mornings, during the day is, is whenever a lot of, uh, the uh, um, actual like work work that I do for my job gets done because I work from home. Uh, I set my own hours. I have lots of time in the afternoon whenever I make uh, uh, calls for our uh, editing and author services stuff that we do through Bukuma. But uh, but yeah, I definitely um, and I had a, you know talk with someone recently about trying to be a little more diligent about having a real schedule and blocking off time for certain things <laughs> rather than 
waking up and seeing what I wanted to do, uh, you know, at a certain time, because um, I got to where I like that freedom. But then I figured out that, you know, I, uh, if I'm going to get everything done that I want to do, I have to be a little more diligent about I can do these things in these hours, and then, you know, block out this time for this and this time for this. So uh, my schedule is always in a in a state of flux, but I also am not good at sleeping. So that definitely, uh, I'm right there with, with most of you guys, uh, most of you guys on that. Pretty sure that's mandatory to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You just you have to there you have to have a little bit of night owl in you. Yeah. I feel like it's like we're we're all a little bit crazy that way. I don't know about anybody else, but I work on like nine books at once. <laughs> Does anyone else do that? Because I get bored with one. Three is so. Life. I just started that. Like I was, I was so religious about like start to finish, and then like I'm trying to rapid release these before Salem, uh-huh. and it's like. I got to I got to be hopping now cuz I have like one going to an alpha, one going to an editor and I'm just like hopping around and I it's a lot easier now. Like I feel ref- refreshed. Like, oh, this is a good idea, you know. I don't feel so bored now. Yeah. Dopamine yeah. chasing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I, re- I recently discovered that too actually. Uh I'm not uh I'm not working on pros right now. I'm I decided I'm going to take this year because I'm an absolutely a crazy person, you know, I've I've done, I've done the book thing, I guess, in my own mind. So now I'm going to see about screen screenwriting and filmmaking. So oh, uh, I, I'm going to take a year and, and, and try to do more of that and figure that out. So, uh, But I, I recently realized that, you know, that's a shorter form, both in terms of the amount of words that are on a page, the amount of page, you know, that makes up, uh, you know, a, a feature can't really be more than 120 pages. And, uh, you know, uh, a pilot, you know, is about 60 for a one hour drama. And then, you know, a short film can be as short as you want. So um it's you can you can finish stuff more easily and because uh of the way that everything is structured you can bounce around easier so i started doing that people have recommended that and it is a different feeling because i was absolutely dig in to a novel spend six months writing it start to finish getting it where i needed and then send it off to my publisher and then kind of start on the next one and, and go through that routine which which is how people can write full time that's kind of how they work when you talk to uh, the bigger authors and the full-time authors, that's sort of how their schedule can work. But when you, uh, you know, have a day job and, you know, you, uh, you know, have other things going on in your life, uh, I have found that, yeah, if you can bounce around from project to project, you are chasing that dopamine high, I know one of you said, and, and just always feeling refreshed about stuff and chasing a new idea. And, uh, you know, whenever you're not on strict contractual deadlines, you know, uh, I've enjoyed that. So I definitely am, you know, developing a different way of looking at working on writing projects and, you know, the different formats and stuff. Um, you know, w- one thing we like to talk about here, because we're all, uh, you know, uh, independent creators and, you know, the, the three authors on the panel, you all essentially run your own small businesses and you have to do everything when it comes to producing your books. Um when when do you find the time or or you know what strategies have you developed for uh the marketing side of things because people often ask me you know uh for for the publishing side of stuff and whenever i'm talking with authors they are always like you know i i need uh, you know i need a lot of what advice can, can you can you do the marketing for me and i'm like whenever i find somebody who knows exactly how to market a book and sell a million copies and it's a repeatable system you know, I will point you in their direction and I haven't found it yet. So uh, what do you all do to try to, you know, let people know that you have books out there and, and, and have you found stuff that works and doesn't work? And, and what's that like? Uh, Maggie, why don't we start with you? <laughs> well, <laughs> we're all like, we're creative. We suck at marketing. <laughs> well, which, which is, you know, which is kind of the standard answer. Which I'm like, hey, whenever I figure it out, I'll let you know. But, you know, everybody has stuff that they that they like to do. And if we all talk about the different things, uh, you know, that, that have worked for us and that we enjoy doing, maybe we'll we'll all learn from each other. I don't know. <laughs> That's the I personally like um, I run. So because I don't have enough time during the day already, I have an engraving uh, business as well. <laughs> so when I send out orders for that, I include um like anyone that sends me um, bookmarks or things like that, um, stickers, things like that, I include all of that stuff in the orders um, that I send out with my other business. So I do marketing for 
myself and other people as well that way for more reach and goodies and things. Um, I've also found um, pretty good success posting in like random um, Facebook groups mm -hmm. um, for like town chats, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, finding people that like to read there. Um, and every once in a while, I'll have a really good TikTok video that'll hit, you know, a couple thousand people and go live. Um, but unfortunately, I, uh, you know, I just, I'm not in the OnlyFans category, so my videos don't get seen a lot. <laughs> but my books are fire, so any of you that, you know, want some spice, it's not going to be there. Either. The books are in that category, just not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Well, and, and, and you know, people who want to um, rely only on uh, social media stuff to, to help them gain traction and stuff, like some people have, you know, do that to great effect, but the algorithm is always changing. And if you do nothing but try to chase that algorithm, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I've, all, I've found nothing but disappointment. Most authors I know haven't found a way to consistently do that and consistently see bumps in their sales that they can – uh, get from that. Now, one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction with people. I know uh, some people who, if they spend a couple hours a day, um, you know, liking and then reaching out to people who uh, are potential readers of theirs in their genre, um, you know, they can get individual sales like that. And, and that, that that's a strong hustle there. But, you know, that's uh, uh, the returns on that are not, you know, what we would all want because the margins in publishing are crap, right? It's not like we're all making $30 a book. We're making, you know, 30 cents to three dollars depending on you know who you're publishing with um right. you know uh d do you have anything that you like to do and that has worked uh you know especially on a sales level but even just on an on an exposure level maybe getting you some uh ku pages read or something like that you know honestly i have had really good success with facebook ads and i know mm -hmm. a lot of people have not been able to crack them um i have not tried me, ad ads or anything like that but um I see a significant drop in my page reads and my sales whenever I forget to refresh those ads. Hmm. Um, I set myself a budget for what I want to spend every month, and I always make more than what I spend. So as long as I'm not in the red, I call it a win. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So Facebook ads. I, I, oh. when I, I, did, I did a trailer once mm -hmm. for a book and got a lot of people to, um, to, to click on and view the, my Amazon page and I did get more uh, more early sales from that book than any of my other ones. So, uh, you know, I think the video aspect helped, but that's the only time I've ever seen any real success with uh, Facebook ads. So, And now that they're merged with Instagram, it's double bang for your buck. Your ads are both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So gotcha, gotcha. If you've got a big, bigger following on Instagram, it'll work, it'll work for you that way too. Okay. Uh, DJ, what do you do to promote your books? <clears throat> So <clears throat> I'm a little, I did things a little weird. Um, about seven months before I decided to publish my first book, I got into all the authors groups and started hounding them to find out what they did. And everybody said the same thing, build your newsletter. Mm -hmm. So I built my newsletter, um, which was basically me just saying, Hey, this is what I'm doing today. <laughs> you know, this is what I'm doing this week, you know? Um, and I mean, now I have, you know, several thousand, you know, subscribers and it, it, it works really well, but my newsletter and just interacting with your, with your readers, like in a Facebook reader group and stuff like that um, is really where those people in your group are your fans like they <laughs> like it sounds it, it's weird for me to think like that like but they actually are like your fans and they want to see you succeed so like like yesterday was my release day i i'm not a crier but i was in tears with the amount of love like i mean these people without even asking were all over everywhere just in my t-shirts holding my book you know and like I feel like that's where you're going to get the most success is if you just really got to engage with your fans like on Facebook you got to find some if you can't be on Facebook discord just something that you have a little group of that they can come to and like you can be real with them because I mean if you if you close that wall you're going to be 
you're no different than one of the big people they can't ever reach. You know, yeah. and I think I think as an indie author, that's where we're different. You can you can reach us. We want to reach yeah. you. You know, mm-hmm. I know there's the reader space and there's the author space, and we try to keep that where it is. But we we like it when you guys say that you like our books. We do. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we oh, do. Yeah. I like- get I get so excited. I'm like, oh, you you liked it, really? <laughs> You haven't done your first event yet, but you're going to be surprised at how people are going to be there and excited (laughs) and like, just kind of like looking at you really timid. Like they're afraid to approach us. That will be like so weird because I'll be afraid to approach them. (laughs) If somebody shows up (laughs) and knows me, I'm going to probably like start crying. (laughs) Oh, I will for sure cry. Just let it be out there now. Whoever comes up to me, I'm going to cry. You're going to, the first one, you're going to. Oh cry. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every time somebody who doesn't share DNA or at least, you know, uh, a family name with me says that they've read my book and I didn't ask them to, and they enjoyed it. Like every time, uh, even though I know how many copies I've sold and it's way more people than I know in real life. Like I understand people are out there who I don't know who have read my book. Every time I am aware of this and they make me aware of it, uh, you know, it's it just, it, it's the coolest feeling in the world. Which, is. you know, is, is, is something that you would think, you know, after several novels and after so many years, you think you get used to. But no, every time somebody tags me in a post or they email me back whenever I send out my newsletter, uh, you know, and it's, it's just, you know, it's always an amazing feeling. And yes, going to um, going to live events and having those people interact with you, uh, you know, is absolutely, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I... Uh, decided after my first novel, I was going to keep doing it because that is one of the coolest things. Uh, so for, for, for narrators, you know, you guys are reading other people's IP and you're bringing their stories to life. Um, do you coordinate with authors to try to get that audiobook out there? Because, you know, if sometimes you're literally splitting the royalties on that or, mm-hmm. you, know, uh, it, you know, there's almost always incentives for more audiobook sales, you make more money. Uh, how does the marketing work on that? And do you promote just on your own uh, stuff to try to get sales of an audiobook uh, also? Well, I mean, I think ideally, especially if you're doing a royalty share situation with an author, you know, it's sort of like a mini marriage that you have with them because you're connected for seven to 10 years, depending on which flat platform you're on. Um, you know, so ideally, if you're doing that, it, it is some like coordinated efforts. And, and I know some of my greatest friendships that I've developed with my authors have been my first, you know, royalty share authors that I've worked with. Um, and so and I think we're all trying to figure that out. Um, I think the things that have kind of driven sales to the audiobooks the best is um, Emma Steinbrecher slash Emmy J. Holland is her other uh, pseudonym. She does these amazing um, aesthetic videos that she overlays like clips of, you know, my narration. And that seems to really drive the audiobook sales. And um, the other thing that I found that really and I have to get permission from the authors to do it is when I'm doing the live narration, like my posts don't do very well. I feel like sometimes like the, the very specifically made videos like are not really on trend. Um, so they don't, they don't always do super well. Um, but going live and when I have author permission to read it live, a lot of those people that tune in, they will end up going and, you know, getting the review copies or, you know, actually going and even if they've listened to most of the book be recorded, they're like, okay, now I want to listen to the, to the finished project. Mm -hmm. Um, But even when I'm not doing royalty share, it's, you know, you work so closely with the person. And that's what I love about doing indie is that it's not just like, some nameless, faceless person that I'm sending a recording off to. Um, I really want to support them and I want their book to do well. And I think when the book does well, it reflects well on, you know, my work. And so, you know, I'm always kind of like whenever I can, I'm posting um, and kind of promoting or talking about how much I love the book and um, whenever possible. I'm like, please, can I narrate it live? And like, this is why it's good. And and fortunately for most of the books I've done, they've, they've been okay with that. And it's been a very fun experience to do it that way. That's cool. Excellent. All right. So we're getting some calls and it's always good to do when you have a big panel of, of different authors to uh, do book recommendations. So we've talked about, uh, you know, you guys have had your new releases, but uh, you know, what are some books that you guys have read recently that you really think that uh, our audience uh, should pick up and uh, not each other's books, but people who are not currently on the panel, who's uh, 
who, whose books should we be out there reading? And uh, whoever, you know, has just a burning desire and really wants to talk a book, uh, feel free to do so. Oh, pick me. Okay. Oh, All right, Megan, go. Not if I beat you to it. <laughs> All right, go Megan, ahead. Then Allie. Oh, no. Uh, oh, sorry. No. No, you go. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I was going to say, um, other pair of indie authors, they're twins, Krista and Becca Ritchie. I will talk about them any chance that I get. I adore them. Their audiobooks are incredible, and they have incredible audiobook narrators. Um, I just recently finished Love and Other Cursed Things, narrated by C.J. Bloom and uh, Lessa Lamb. Just amazing. So, so good. Um, the Like Us series is fantastic. You should definitely go listen to it. There. That's my plug. <laughs> All right. Maggie. An insect um, desire. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the books that actually has been released within the last year is an author, C.M. Andrews, or uh, sorry, uh, Claire Andrews, um, daughter of Sparta. Um, her and I uh, had a podcast together and she is absolutely fantastic. She is so nice. She loves all of her fans. Um, and her books are absolutely fantastic. She does uh, Greek reimaginations as well. And um, uh, Daughter of Sparta follows Apollo and Daphne because there's not a whole lot on that story. And the way she tells the story, uh, you could get lost in the pages for days and be eaten by wolves and you'd be totally fine with it. Um, like just everything in it, the imagery, the way she uses her words is fantastic. So if you haven't read anything by Claire Andrews, I highly recommend it. She's got all three of the books out for that series. Excellent. All right. Uh, D, what do you got? Oh, geez. Um, it all depends on what you're in the mood to read. Um, the series that I just read, which I absolutely loved. Um, it's a fantasy series about, werewolves but with a twist um the cover when i tell you a cover can sell you this cover <laughs> is gorgeous hang on i gotta show it i'm like i'm i'm a huge fan of shifter so i'm like which <laughs> which world <laughs> fantasy are we talking about okay i haven't read that one um i can't even describe it from all the spoilers just know that the it's a werewolf clan and she calls on the deity of that clan to help her in a situation. And when he shows up, all hell breaks loose. It's a great storyline. <laughs> Absolutely great storyline. Um, it's um, the first one actually is rejected and it's Jamin Eve. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name right. J A Y N Eve. Australian author. Indie Australian author. She's great. That's All right. I'm DJ. Home. Oh, I'm terrible. Um, <clears throat> so I have been like in a sports romance, which is like, I never into sports romance, but um, an indie author who's like, she's the sweetest, absolutely the sweetest person you'll ever meet in your life. Um, named Brittany Ann does um, the batter up series and she actually just completed her series. Um, so it's batter up swing, batter swing and uh, slugger, but they're so good. It's like um, baseball meets mafia, some FBI. It's really, really good series. Um, so I've been reading that one. And then um Another one, which is not an indie author, if you guys haven't checked out, um, Olivia Dade. Um, she does the Spoiler oh Alert God. series. Um, if you haven't checked that out, you're really missing out. Um, it's like sci-fi uh, type of setting. Like, you know, it's movie stars who work on kind of like a Game of thrones -y type of set um very body positive the female characters are plus size um romantic comedy but they're it's really really cute and they have a lot of um nerdy references in it so if you're into that um i would check her out <laughs> but no i'm not like i'm terrible with if, if it's not on an audiobook i can't really read it um because i'm dyslexic mm. so like i'm kind of limited to my I, I can't get all the cool like shifters and all that stuff yet that's on audio is it 
Yes, ma'am. I need it then. Because there, there, <laughs> I, I not think you're playing of, along. There are, whole, there are not a whole lot of like great shifter. I mean, well, there are, but I've I've already listened to them all. So I need more. <laughs> yeah. uh, DJ, have I sent you a copy of the Clan of Wolves? Because if not, I no. should. It's it's mild spice. The first book is fade to black, and there's only one spice scene in the second book. So I don't know if you prefer a little bit more spice. It may not be for you. It's Just because mild. I write spice doesn't mean that's all I like. <laughs> <laughs> Some, and, and sometimes you, know, you need a day. <laughs> yeah, and you know that, that that's always an interesting uh, interesting topic for authors to talk about. Uh, you know what they write versus what they read. Sometimes it's the same. And, and sometimes it's not. And I try to make it a point to read um, different stuff out, outside of of my genre. But, you know, the last year or so, um, most of my reading is, uh, you know, submissions for uh, the publishing house or uh, the books that we decide that we are going to uh, publish. But those are across a, a wide range of, uh, of genres, too. And so I'm, uh, you know, my book recommendations are I'm legally obligated to say, all of the books published by uh, uh, Blue Handle Publishing, which employs me. Uh, but no, I, I'm all, I'm proud of all the books that we've put out, and uh, you know, it's uh, you can find them at BlueHandlePublishing.com. Um, uh, and now we don't really do we haven't done much romance yet, although I know that you know we're open to all genres. And I was I was talking with an author today um, who you know sent me a, a submission uh, talking about you know the major publishers, the big five versus what we can do. Uh, as a small uh, small publisher, um, and then versus you know what you guys do in the indie publishing world, you guys publish absolutely whatever you want, whenever you want. It's total freedom, which is amazing. Um, you know, uh, most small presses uh, they have a lot more freedom than the bigger presses because uh, you know each person's uh, marketing campaign and, and their audience can be custom built to what they've written, so they can write the story they want, and it doesn't have to fit neatly into a genre and neatly into a lane. Whereas the major publishers, they have, you know, these pipelines and they have, you know, these lanes where uh, they know how to sell to certain audiences and that they look for books that are already in those lanes so that they can, you know, plug them in there and, and, and do that. So, you know, that, that's one of the major differences uh, between indie publishing versus small independent presses versus, you know, the big five and the major, uh, major publishers. But uh um, another difference is in the audiobook world, uh, because, you know, uh, indie creators and small presses both can use uh, ACX and go uh, straight to narrators, whereas the big five, uh, they, you know, have much, you know, bigger contracts. They have to work with unions, you know, as, as Ali was pointing out and stuff like that. So it's a little different ball game. I wanted to ask the authors on the panel, uh, have you gotten any of your books um, made into audiobooks? And if you have, what was that process like? Because it seems like every author I ask that to has a slightly different take on how they found their narrator, what kind of contracts they use, and all that stuff. So uh, let's, uh, uh, looks like DJ, were you uh, raising your hand there? Or were oh, you tapping I was, on your phone? I was oh. swiping. So, okay. I mean, I, yes, I do. Actually, my books are in audio, but I, I was, I have a thingy. But um, sorry. For... They keep talking in the chat about this horrible book I did as a joke. Well, we all did it as a joke, and it's they're like, "This is my favorite horrible. book." It's Lies. Beautiful. It's a beautiful <laughs> love story that will stand the test of time. Like, I mean, it's beautiful. It can't uh, be worse than Red Hot Allosaurus Summer. That, as in dinosaur, allosaurus is in the dinosaur. Oh yeah, that was funny though. <laughs> this one and this sex desire like really grips you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gripping something, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, All right, let's not let, let's not make make let's not get to talk to uh, put this in jail. Uh, I'm, that sorry, I'm sorry. Believe it or not. Oh yeah, some some comments in the live were filtered to predict the community's experience. Oh no. So, <laughs> so congratulations, panel. Good job, uh, Allie. You, <laughs> no, uh, I'm always causing trouble every live, <laughs> every live. But no, um, uh, yes, I I have currently I have two audiobooks um out, and um, I should have three more by the end of summer. Um, if if Paige 
Paige is my narrator. It's going to depend on Paige and um, Christian, Christian Leatherman. If you guys aren't following Christian Leatherman, I don't know what you're doing with your life because. Christian is so, he's a lovely individual as well. He's just like good people. He he is such a good person. And um, I'm telling you right now, y'all need to be listening to Fox because I have a very unhealthy relationship with that voice. Um, But I'm really spoiled when it comes to my audiobook narrators because um I just kind of latch onto them like a stray cat and they can't get rid of me and um they just pet me and tell me I'm pretty and keep doing what they need to do so <laughs> but I love there's nothing better than listening to your book on audio I in my opinion because you guys just narrators just bring it to life like you spend all your time making this baby and then they just take it and you just, the emotions you're feeling in your head when you're writing it, they just bring it to life. And it's like, then you really just ugh, in your heart. Yeah. It's good. It's really good. Um, I highly recommend if anybody's thinking about turning your book into audio, really look into it. It's, it's, uh, it, 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 if you're feeling bad about yourself, if that imposter syndrome's coming out, I'm telling you, that is one way that has always helped me, like, get back to it. It's like, you know, I made that. Like, I wrote that, and then those people were able to make that come to life. It's it's just magical. So That's awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite right, part. Who, of who wants to follow that? <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry let me let no me no no now. We, we love it uh um, but yeah like uh like maggie or, or d you know do you uh you know what what sort of stuff do you have to 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 add to that because yeah i mean i think most authors would agree that that's the experience you have whenever you hear somebody performing your words because they've always existed on your computer or in a book or in your own mind but then to have somebody else perform them and to hear that is always really special I don't have mine. Uh, I want to, but I feature a lot. Um, I do a lot of uh, Scottish Gaelic in my book. And uh, people, the audiobook narrators who have reached out to do mine don't want to listen to how to pronounce things because <laughs> it can be awkward. Um, so I just haven't found anybody uh, to pronounce the nonsense in my book yet. So, but it would really? be pretty cool. Yeah. They look like my favorite thing. And I'm like, please send me an audio file of you saying it exactly how you want me to say it. And I will say it that way. <laughs> That's awesome. I will be contacting you. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Dee? What are your, do you have audio books and, and what was your experience like? I put my first book up on ACX almost a year ago and I did sign a contract with someone, but unfortunately he was in the military and got deployed and had to cancel. Yeah. I've not found anybody that can do the voices, the justice that they deserve. So they are not in audio yet. All right. Well, all of the narrators that are in the audience and those of you who have used uh, voice actors that you like, send D your recommendations and get her hooked up with someone because uh, Paige Teddy's is incredible books. too. She needs her Paige, books on audio. We, we yes. love Paige and PJ. Yes, yep. she's amazing. Uh, absolutely. I need somebody with a really good Irish. Um, and actually, M is in the chat. M M is really good. Calamity Jane, like all all the people. Oh yeah, and I think Blanca was in here just a few. Minutes oh yeah, Blanca. Ago. Blanca's amazing. And then Allie here. Allie's amazing. Yep. <laughs> she won't say it, but she's just gonna. Hey, I'm just waiting. Out. I'm waiting for a sunshine roll. I'm just waiting for it to be written. Listen, so I'm, I'm, writing writing it. I'm writing it. Okay. <laughs> I'm writing it. Okay. And, and, and you know, character. And one of the reasons we like doing the show is, is helping people make connections that they might not otherwise have. So yes, by all means, if you uh, if you are a voice actor looking for work, uh, you know, get in contact with D or get in contact with someone who knows her, and let's get her books made. Now, another thing that you uh, you all have to worry about as independent authors is the artwork for your books and also the artwork for your marketing. Uh, Maggie, I believe that you um, do that either uh, for professionally or as a side hustle. So what, uh, you know, what sort of artwork do you do? And can you show us some samples? Because this is a visual medium after all. Well, um, 
I kind of brought some stuff. My bad. Um, so this is a bookmark uh, oh, wow. that I drew. You can't really see um, it, but I engraved her face on it. This is a main character oh. from oh, my, my book. Gosh. That is um, beautiful. That's awesome. So it's actually in uh, my book. The full art copy of it is in my book. Um, you have to do. I did. This is a little bit more of her face. Let's see if I can get my camera to work. Oh, wow. Uh, and did you draw did. her face or is yep. that? Yep. Nice. And her oh eyes. Oh, my gosh. I had people comment on this that it's AI. It is not AI. She's in. I'm not going to give it away. But once you read Tears of Silver Shadows, you'll see why her eyes are like this. Um, mm -hmm. But everything on this, I drew and designed myself. That is wild. Um, if you if you look at my Instagram, which is the same name, I did my own uh, logo for it. Let's see if I can get my life together. This is a little snapshot of it. Oh, wow. Uh, so I design logos for people, um, authors. I've designed a lot of um, authors like Hannah Blue C, Harper, uh, Harper Conway, Harper Riley. Um, their logos for them so I just like to do graphic design I did um, IT for a long time um, after the military so anything like digital arts and things like that that's what I like to do that's, that's awesome you, you are so talented that's amazing <laughs> thank you we have fun we have fun over here because you know triple threat Cry. I know what what can you not do I mean geez <laughs> oh do we all have ADHD because I feel I feel like that vibe is like Aww. we're jack of all trades master of learning no. exactly <laughs> I feel like you have to be in this industry because nobody's gonna do it for you mm -hmm. and to always have it outsourced to have everybody else do it you're gonna be spending a ton of money mm -hmm on things I like to like with my formatting um, business for indie authors. Um, I really, um, I really aim to try and uh, either do it free or like cups of coffee, things like that for indie authors because formatting and um, editing are the two things that you really need in order to self-publish successfully. And those are the two most things other than cover art, you know, that's pretty expensive. So I try to give back to the self-publishing community and everything. People message me be like, Hey, I'd like to, I'd like to get a logo done. Um, I really like yours or they'll reference someone I've done. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, um, I don't, you know, I don't have anything, but it, I want to put it in my book. And I'm like, okay, no worries. Like, I'll just do it up real quick. But you have to give me like a week to do it because I procrastinate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so well, as, as we've established, we are a procrastination of authors on this right? panel, narrators. Um, so, so uh, emphatically, someone is calling out for you to show us the cover of your book, Maggie. Oh, um, okay. And and having viewed it online before the show, it is excellent. Thank you. As are all of them, yeah. And, and I'm is, assuming you do that. You did that yourself. Um, I worked with a cover designer um, for this one. Um, the elements are um, my my thought process, but she put them on the cover itself because I can't Beautiful. format a cover to save my life. Gotcha. So, and and, um, and you, you referenced the art on the pages, so we're going to see if you can. Oh. We I can talk you into showing that. And seeing if that'll come up on the camera. Uh, Tanya's down my, here. Uh, my yelling. iPad doesn't want to stay sitting up because it's lazy like myself. So you just have to bear with me, you know, procrastinate. Uh, oh that'll be all right. Goodness. Yeah. You know, Jesus. you know, cover art is definitely uh, you know, uh, it, it's its own thing. We uh, you know, we're always evaluating our process of blue handle and who we use and Oh, okay. Ooh. So the chapter headers are my design, as is uh, the um, page break. Okay. So I design, when I format um, people's books, I ask them for elements, and then I I uh, design their 
own special page breaks based on book elements from their books. See, that's what, awesome. That's that's my next step. Like with my books, I want to get like it actually professionally formatted. Like I have vellum, and I like mm-hmm. you know half ass do it. But like, I'll show you how to use vellum. I use vellum until when I couldn't get my page breaks to. Yeah, like I have like in my book, I tried. I put a, I put a page break in it. But, like, it came out, and I don't even know if you can see it. Like, it came out so pale, mm. Mm. and I was I was so brokenhearted. I'll show you how to do it a super easy way. Just message me later. Okay. Anyone, anyone wants help with vellum? I will help you. Excellent. <laughs> and, yeah. and see, you know, when, when I need the page design for my stuff or for, for the stuff of Blue Handle, my brain works better with with Word. Now, granted... Uh, we, we don't do, we do, uh, uh, we have one fantasy series that we do, but most of our stuff uh, is, is more in the, the crime fiction realm or more just kind of literary fiction or coming of age where um, I, I think I can be safe in saying that the interior page design is not as much of uh, a factor uh, as it is in fan, in definitely fantasy and, and even in romance. But, uh, you know, the fantasy books I've read, you know, uh, from all different kinds of publishers from, you know, major ones in New York all the way, you know, uh, and especially, you know, independent creators, you know, that gets so beautiful and I'm always in awe. And whenever we, uh, whenever we have somebody who, uh, who's writing more of a like, like true, like a fantasy, whenever we publish one of those books, uh, we may even have to outsource. So I'll make sure that, uh, that, that you're on our list because that, uh, you know, Whenever, whenever I, I'm a word person, like not Microsoft Word, but like, you know, the words are my thing. I'm an editor. Mm-hmm. And so the visual stuff, we have other people on our staff who do that. And uh, and so, you know, whenever we have to have something like that happen, that is going to have to be outsourced. And, and uh, you know, a, as an editor, I can say to yes, that is sometimes the most expensive part of getting a book published. Um, and, you know, depending on what your skill set is as a writer, uh, it can also be something that can really, um, you know, um, it doesn't really help sales if it's incredibly well edited, but it can hurt, you know, which is what I tell people that if you have a lot of typos and if that kind of stuff is not your strong suit and you don't have some a professional look at it, um, you know, we have a lot of stories of people who, you know, they've gotten their negative reviews and it's hurt their sales, but then they go back and have someone edit it. <laughs> I see that. I see the D it sounds like you have a, you have a story about that, but then you go back and you re-edit it, re-release it, and uh, the reviews, the star rating goes up and the sales can go up. So, um, you know, what, what's what's your experience with that, Dee? So I fell into this. I had never had any intention of writing a book, but I had this story in my head that was living rent free. So my friends all convinced me to do it, and I wrote this book, I published it, and then I very shortly realized that the file was completely corrupted. So the first edition of my very first book, even though it had been edited by at least four different people, was so horrible. (laughs) So horrible. So my very, very, very first um, review that I got, because English is not my first language, Spanish is. um, So there's always a barrier there to begin with. But um, not only did she, like, tear apart my English, she also tore apart my Spanish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was horrible. And that's one of the, the biggest things that I tell people now, is like, we're not perfect. We are not robots. Um, there's not a book published that is perfect. Right. Nope. I mean, and if that's what's going to scare you from releasing your book, me as an example when I tell you that that book is still going through edits as we speak with a professional and we're still finding things wrong with that file and it's been out for almost two years and it's still my number one seller errors and all so there you go. I'm, I'm glad same. you said that because I'm I the exact same <laughs> thing for the first one and I'm like <sighs> mm-hmm 
I've promised my first author that I will re-record and re-release at like no cost <laughs> her first audiobook. It's not bad. Like we don't we don't have bad like reviews or anything. And like it's I I love what we did with it, but like now listening to where I am now, I'm like, oh God, I just want to redo it. <laughs> well, the, the backer of that thing was when I read the review, I'm like, what is she talking about? And then I went and I looked mm-hmm. and the copy I had was a lot cleaner than the copy that somehow got transmitted somewhere mm. in between yeah. my file and it uploading to Amazon. The just the file just got completely corrupted. Wow, that's and awful. Twice and re-uploaded, and there's still issues with it. Hmm. My, you know, I like publish it and republish it again. And I refuse. I refuse. So file corruption notwithstanding, it seems like most creators. Um, you know, the, the first book they release or, or you know, an audio book in, in Ali's case. Yeah, they, they usually, you know, uh, after after some distance and after having done it a few more times, realize the things they wish they'd done the first time and that they can improve on. And, uh, you know, very few authors, uh, I've never actually talked to an author who, uh, when somebody asks, so which one of your books, um, you know, I've never read any of your books, but which one should I start with? I've never heard anyone say, you should start with the first one that I released, you know, a number of years ago. Like, not one time ever. It's always, you should read my latest release. Or sometimes an author does have a favorite that isn't the latest one they've released. Uh, you know, I have one called Let the Guilty Pay that is not my most recent, but that's the one that's closest to my heart that I tell people. But it is definitely not my debut. And not that my debut hasn't done well. Um, you know, it, it uh, the sales were really, really good. It did, uh, you know, it, it won an award and all this stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm super proud of what it did for me, but I will never, ever recommend it to somebody who's brand new to my work. It's just, uh, I've never met an author who, who wants, wants to do that. And, and I'm talking, you know, uh, ones that have released 50 books and ones that have released, uh, you know, uh, three to five, you know, like, like most, uh, you know, uh, most authors that I know, it's just, yeah, that's, that's just kind of because you're always getting better at your craft, right? Like it, it, that's the point. Nobody wants to, you know, um, get to a certain level and then just stay there. We're all trying to, trying to to get better. Um, in in that vein, you know, what uh, what sort of things uh, have you all discovered that you uh, are better at now than you were at the beginning, and what sort of stuff are are maybe you still trying to to get better at? Like for me, it's always uh, it's always you know characters. I'm always trying to create. Uh, create better characters for my stories and my storytelling is what I'm always working on. But uh, what about you guys? What, what are you guys always still working on to try to improve? Hair color. <laughs> Writing suck it or it. drawing it? Yeah, that's right. what I was going to say. Well, <laughs> both. Because I suck at drawing it. But all of my all of my female mer- main characters all have red hair. Hmm. I wonder why. I, nothing wrong because with it's, it's because it's a vibe. Beautiful. Because I don't see it a whole lot and everything. So I'm just like, let's go ahead and write them all. And I have I have people be like, can we get some other hair color? And I'm like, yes, in the males, we can. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Not the ladies, though. I don't know. I kind of like that. It's a vibe. Right? I, I say go for it. Embrace mm-hmm. it. I And I have to not use uh, uh, ING all the time like I'll start like all of my sentences the same or you know you know using ing for every beginning sentence so I still have a hard habit of when I'm writing the the draft of writing it in text style in shorthand and every (laughs) Some of that stuff slips through. It's like, oh, not again. <laughs> so that's been my hardest to break that habit. Well, you know, the the, the first draft, uh, you know, uh, what I always tell people is that's when you're telling yourself the story. The first draft, first mm-hmm. of all, nobody but you should ever read the very first draft. I, I wouldn't think like maybe one or two trusted people who 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 know kind of what your process is like and what you're going for and can give you you know, the kind of constructive criticism you need uh, at that point. But, you know, so early, yeah, the first draft, you're telling yourself the story, and that's for you. So, um, you know, if, if it bothers you, by, by all means, improve on it. But I, uh, I you know, that, that's not something that... What is that supposed to be? I forget. <laughs> gotcha. What about you, DJ? Well, originally, what I have gotten better with is the eye rolling. There was 
so much eye rolling. They all rolled their eyes so much. And my editor was like, okay, is he 40 or 14? Because there's a lot of eye rolling going on here. Like every other action. Uh, now she says it's my sympathy dots. So I am a <laughs> horrible dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, I'm trying to you create. Love dot, dot, dot. I know. Well, my problem is I do it because I think of it in terms of audio. Because that's how I consume my yeah, book, the book. I that read. makes sense. That's so why I, I like it. Right. So I put the dot, dot, dots because I'm thinking, okay, that's where I want you know them to create attention you know mm-hmm. a tense moment and she's like okay but you can do that without dots um i think we did a word search and like in fifty thousand words i had done dot 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 400 times oh okay <laughs> okay that is a little much yeah uh, i i'm, I'm like it was a very tense one book one. yeah no, that, that's that's a lot <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they're they're my they're my security dots. Um, that's <laughs> that's currently what we're working on is my yeah. dots. As as an editor, as uh, as Tanya pointed out, uh, yeah, exclamation points are something that I I definitely I try to get rid of those uh, as many as possible because you know and I, I you know and one thing I I worked on was uh, the amount of uh, the amount of cursing in my books because I definitely uh, you know I wrote stuff about journalists in the newsrooms and. You know, those there, you know, it's uh, people have really foul mouths just in those environments. So to stay true to that, uh, I had a lot. But I exclamation points and curse words are working the same and that the more you use them in one work, the less effective they become, the less of a punch they pack. So, you know, the more spare you can be with both whenever you do use them and you use them intentionally, they carry that that weight. So that's one way to um, to to look look at that. Uh, and then, uh, Ali, you know what uh, what does a, a voice actor work on, and what sort of techniques and stuff have you improved on that you wish that you could go back and uh, and fix in that first audiobook you were talking about? Um, I mean, definitely the the editing. So, and and I do, I absolutely love. Like, um, I should say, like, um, go listen to the Sacrifice of Ava Black by Ag Porter because it it definitely was a work of heart of mine. Ag um, is a dear dear friend of mine and gave me such a wonderful playground to work in. Um, but that was with my my first microphone that I had. So like the tech stuff, um, mouth noises, <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah, like, so mic positioning, um, but then also, you know, with Sacrifice of Ava Black um, had a really large ensemble cast. And so it was a really interesting book for me to cut my teeth on because I was doing all these different character voices. There's a lot of different accents. Um, So it was it was really great way to just like just dive into it be like, I'm going to do all the accents and I'm going to do all the character voices and things like that. Um, So I've definitely, I've definitely improved on like character voicing and, and learning that in order to do male voices, I don't really have to like strain and and do deep voices. There's a lot of different ways to do that characterization. Um, My pacing is a lot better than it used to be. And also I'm just, I'm not editing my own work anymore. Um, I'm outsourcing all of my editing, uh, AB book services, um, Antoine Bandelay, bless him for um, taking my audio and turning it into something that sounds as sparkly and lovely as it does. Um, he just like, he's a wizard and just, he makes me sound so good. Oh my gosh. He's amazing. Um, I could just gush about him. Um, but yeah, like my first three books are all edited by me. So speaking of like wearing all the hats in the business, it's like you're the voice actor and you're the editor and you're like, everything so um yeah those are a lot of things and uh I make a lot of weird mistakes um and I've gotten a lot better about those um I do a lot of like word reversals and I've saved like a bunch of my outtakes from like my first books and they're absolutely hilarious um I post them every once in a while and I I just like I, I reverse like word order all the time since I record live people tend to be like um did you realize you just said that so I like catch oh, them no. live <laughs> A lot more often, um, but, (laughs) and apparently the, everybody's favorite work is, um, an insect's desire. I narrated as, uh, Roxanne Silver for that one, uh, PJ, um, uh, Freeborn was my co-narrator for that one. Um, but yeah, apparently that's my best work yet. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But judging by this live alone, yeah, that, that seems, it seems to have a, quite a cult following. Everybody it's it's for charity as well. What's that, DJ? 
I said, everybody go listen to it now. Yeah. It's for charity. It's available everywhere. It is wide, except you can't find it on Audible. It is fully dungeoned on Audible. It's the only platform you can't find it. Which for makes it reason. that much better. It's on Spotify. It's on Chirp. It's on like all the things. And also all the proceeds go to charity for Responder Rescue. So um, yeah, PJ and I did did the narration for free. <laughs> so because it was just like a charity, like fun project. So Beautiful. yeah. Why? Uh, what? Well, why is Audible noping the the audio? Did they give you a reason? I think it's because of the male nurples on the front cover, because it's a bare chested <laughs> oh. person. Uh, <laughs> it's um, y'all go look up the cover of it right now. Um, it is a <laughs> Beetle Man. Uh, it's a parody of Monster Smoot. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A, a Beetle, but <laughs> she's pulled it out. <laughs> It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Gotcha. The, yeah, the crown and the antenna, it's it's pretty epic. So um, for whatever reason, uh, it's distributed wide through Findaway and it's uh, it's popped up everywhere else, but it just has never has never mm. loaded into Audible. And I think they were just like, nope, you can't know. <laughs> Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Well, we'll see. And that, the, I always tell people that's that's a marketing strategy. You know, uh, <laughs> li- li- listen to the audio book too. You know, too steamy for for Audible or, um, you know, what was we had an author on a couple weeks ago, um, who uh, I think it was either Facebook or Amazon. You know, said, hey, you know, we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna do an ad for your book because we think it's too spicy. And so it's like, you know, that's that's an obvious one. You know, read the read read the book that uh, you know Facebook says is uh, you know uh, too spicy for you. Like I think that that would drive sales immediately. <laughs> too too spicy <laughs> for Audible. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and of course you know, but really the, the fact that it's for charity, you know, that's uh, that's really yeah, that's definitely. really an awesome deal. Yeah, and it was it was a it was a fun project to do. It's actually not even that spicy. It's just weird. <laughs> it is so. It's so. It's so good. It's so good. And it really well, is. It really is. Like I have listened to way way spicier, but it's just it puts you in such a good mood listening to it. And you're doing it for charity, people. It's for charity. Mm-hmm. It's like two dollars. <laughs> yeah. What were you gonna spend the two dollars on? Right. Yep. Charity, and you will get the sweetest new pet names for your your significant. My little aphid. You are my little aphid. (laughs) (laughs) I love. I love that book. I really should be promoting Pride Pancakes in Paris and not an insect (laughs) desire, but inevitably that's where it devolved to. But also Emma, Emma, and Monroe Wildrose wrote it as August Extern. They 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 co wrote it, so it still is promoting Emma's work. But it's yeah. Is Pride Pride's not out yet, right? Pride Pancakes in Paris. No, it's going to come out early March, and it's okay. going to the audiobook and the ebook and paperback are all going to release at the same time. So, which is going to oh, be a, a simultaneous release. She, We're really she, excited. She got she got the three together. I I can't I mm-hmm. can't. It's it not- took like a lot of planning and coordination. Yeah. <laughs> like she started, she, yeah, she, she started working with Antoine cause she went through Antoine because um, I, she needed a, a male narrator. And so she went through um, AB book services. Uh, Josh Putnam is my co-narrator for it. Okay. And she, yeah, she, I think she started talking with them back in November was when she started. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's the advice I always give to, to authors is that if you're wanting to time your, have your audiobook release at the same time as your ebook, you, it is not too early to start looking like six months ahead of your release time, if not mm-hmm. more, because then it, we have to figure out how to fit everything in and make sure it's recorded in time that it fits in with mm-hmm. our editor schedule. And then you have time to review it and then you have time to upload it to find a way or audible or wherever you're putting it through. Cause then that can take 10 days to be approved so um yeah we managed that all the stars aligned and it worked out and then of course you know the author has to make sure that you know they're willing to delay the release of their um you know their print product too um uh, mm-hmm. you know which which in major publishing isn't as big a, of an issue because you know that that entire strategy um and it's one that we employ too with blue handle uh, revolves around long lead times to give, you know, the, the trade publications time to review, uh, our creators time to read and, and to build all that up. 
uh, whereas a lot of indie indie publishers, and I know uh, one of you mentioned, I think it was D, having a rapid release schedule. That is one that is proven to be um, financially beneficial for you guys. And, uh, you know, especially if you are writing shorter stuff and you have a strong social media, but really especially a strong newsletter uh, following, uh, yeah, if you, if you can release, you know, a book a month, uh, or a book every two months, then, you know, I, a lot of the most financially successful independent authors, I know that's how, that's how they do it. So two very different ends of that spectrum. So that's why, you know, it, it's, it's a little rare to hear of an indie author mm -hmm. releasing their audiobook at the same time as their ebook and, and their print book and stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, he, you, know. you really could have released it in January. Cause like mm -hmm. Josh and I got the final, final version, um, you know, in January, and so then that's kind of because, you know, a lot of times indie authors, they may make changes and edits right up until like a week or two before release. And so her her book has been sales ready since January. And it's just it's in holding now until we finish the audiobook. Oh, got you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, TikTok tells me we've uh, we've been on for 90 minutes, which means I'm 30 minutes late to, to say all this. But thank you to all the people who've joined us, uh, you know, late in this last hour. We love it. Um, you know, um, again, if you, if you tap that screen and hit that like button, uh, they get some more people, uh, to view us. And, uh, you know, we, we, we always love to see that, uh, you know, uh, we've, we've had a lot of great gifters tonight. And, you know, if, if you, uh, if you've been, been waiting and holding out, don't do it because, you know, we've only got, you know, 30 minutes if we go the full run. Uh, and, you know, uh, Tanya and Shelly are down in the comments, uh, thanking everybody and, uh, making sure this thing runs on time. So I have to thank them. And, uh, you know, uh, just uh, all the panelists, you all have been great, uh, you know, sticking with us this long. We do try to go for a full two hours. So if y'all are up for it, uh, I'm up for it. We can uh, we can continue talking. Um, but, uh, you know, I it, it's always interesting to hear the, the different approaches people take to to when and how they release books. I know that we talked earlier about we're all just trying to get as much done as we can and in whatever uh, time we have, but it sounds like, you know, because D was the one who's retired and, and can do a little more of that stuff. Uh, when did you decide that you wanted to do that rapid release and uh, you know, what sort of uh, benefits have you found uh, from, you know, using that strategy? Well, I was blessed to be on the beta team for um, an author who has kind of become my mentor in this whole process. Uh, Miss Marie James. Um, and she lit a fire under my butt and was just like, this is to ride the the Amazon wave. And I'm like, we're going, what, what's that? She was like, if you can, and she, she warned me, she goes, it's hectic. You need to be on a rapid release schedule because the more books you get out, the better your sales are going to be. And I think she was the first one to tell me, what is it, 20 books to 50K or something mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Um, she goes, the quicker you have, she said, you're not going to make your primary money on your new books. You're going to make it on your backlog. So until you create that backlog, you're not going to get anywhere comfortable financially Yep. where you see that what you put into the books is coming back to you. So I took that to heart and I did, I rapid released the first 12 books in my first series in 11 months. Oh, wow. Wow. A lot of errors, and um, I'm kind of like working backwards now. Um, did the first draft of the covers were uh, all homemade by me and my husband. Um, they are now all being professionally done, um, redone, um, and it's uh, it was a crazy ride. Um, I it, it was fun. It was hectic. I don't think I would ever recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you need to save your sanity and, and possibly your, your your family and marriage. And everyone else. <laughs> and everyone else. <laughs> um, save your your sanity, your life, and your marriage. Um, you you need to give yourself a minimum a minimum of eight weeks between releases to to do any book justice. So that you can get it out to the art team properly, and you're not literally sitting there watching the clock, the countdown on Amazon to get that book in at the very last second, oh, which right. is basically what I did <laughs> the entire year. That sounds incredibly stressful. 
Uh, that's yeah. not, that, sounds, yeah. that doesn't sound like and that's very no conducive way. to being creative. Oh, no man. way. But, but I take it in the marketing and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So you talked about going back and working through mm -hmm. and, and improving this stuff, you know, retroactively. Um, mm -hmm. Did you, you know, you know, do the rapid release and, you know, start, you know, making money, and getting some funds. And are you using those now to go back and do those improvements? Because, you know, like, as I tell everybody, and you all know, being an independent uh, author is, is a small business. So, you mm -hmm. know, it sounds like you, you went and you, uh, you know, you uh, found a way to make some initial capital and then reinvest it into your uh, backlist so that it continues to make even more money than it was. And then so once you get that done, you'll be able to go and start using your funds for the more uh, recent releases. Exactly what I did. So what I pretty much did was for the first, I think, seven or eight books, I didn't put anything in money wise into it other than editing. That's all I paid out. Everything else we did ourselves. I formatted it on our own and we just did clip art for the cover. Mm. So then once I had the money, I went back and I redid them. Oh, there you go. Made, got myself a logo. And I have pretty much have just been going through the backlist and doing that. Um, my husband has gotten very proficient in uh, cover art. And um, he is now my new art designer. Okay. He is doing my new covers. Um, he's also doing photography. And I'm finding it a really hard time finding plus size models, people of color, indigenous um, so yeah, so we're branching out on in that direction as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, I imagine you know that might uh, um, you know that might be hard to find models who don't fit that same uh, mold. And we actually had a cover model on here a couple weeks ago, and uh, you know it was interesting to get a little glimpse into how that works. But uh, um, you know, I I could uh, I, I I could see how you know that might take a little more work than the people who can find just, you know, the standard guy with big arms or guy with big abs and, you know, um, that sort of stuff. But I think we can all applaud you um, in, in your efforts to do that because, you know, uh, more diversity in books is something that the entire industry needs. Yeah. And uh, independent authors have always, I think, uh, or at least in the last, you know, decade, been leading the way on that. They are the ones pushing mm -hmm. those boundaries. And so, uh, you know, uh, thank you for that. And, you know, we definitely all, uh, you know, can take a cue from you and make sure that uh, we're thinking about that kind of stuff whenever we are um, creating our, our art. Yeah, it's um, difficult trying to, because I did my entire um, 12 book series of MC, they're all diverse. And I try very, very, very hard to get the cover models that I picked after the fact to match what I wrote. And it's been really difficult, really difficult. Same thing with my audios, trying to find somebody that's got the right Irish accent from Boston. Very difficult. So. Well, if anyone knows people, voice actors or models who you think might fit what, uh, what uh, Dee's going for, reach out to her. Yes. Paige is the master of accents. Paige yeah. is incredible. Like I can do accents, like I can, I can, I can do them. Um, but if you want someone who is like, just like really honed in on like dialect and she's fantastic. Her website also tells you like all of the accents that she's very comfortable doing as well. Mm -hmm. I will check it out. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, one thing, uh, you know, and this isn't related necessarily to, to writing your books, but uh, uh, I know uh, and I'm, I, I'm starting to work with uh, uh, a young woman who wants to be uh, a filmmaker. And, and so I said, I'm starting to get into that. So we're working on uh, an idea and I'm working on a short uh, screenplay for her. But one thing I told her going in uh, that I learned from talking to so many of you independent authors was that, you know, if you want to be a filmmaker, and, and do it on your own and be the director and all that stuff. You have to do everything yourself. You have to coordinate everything. You have to, you know, find the videographers, the editors, and, you know, think about um, every little detail of it. And so 
Uh, and to her credit, she's doing a great job with it. And, uh, you know, I think uh, awesome. if everything comes together, we're going to make a really, really awesome, you know, short film that we're going to submit to the festivals and do all that stuff, uh, you know, here in the first part of the year. Uh, but I'm really glad that, you know, I, I, I get the chance every week to, to pick the brains of, uh, you know, independent authors who are doing it, doing it well, and who have great insight like this, because that translates to a lot of different things. And it definitely, uh, you know, I, I'm, I was really glad that I was able to let her know up front, like, if you want to do this, and if you want us to throw in together, you know, you have to think about all these, these different things, because she started out as a writer, and we're working on an novel too. But, uh, um, but yeah, so, so I just, you know, wanted to thank you guys for uh, all the explanations and all the insights that you provide uh, for us in terms of everything that goes into what you do besides just writing the book, right? Because, you know, that's, uh, that's one of the things on, on book talk is, is it's, you know, a lot of it is about, uh, is about the books and it's about, you know, people offer, you know, storytelling and writing help, but uh, I don't see a ton. <laughs> oh, thanks, Charles. That's a, that's a cute. That's cute. Dude. That was awesome. One little owl. Um, but yeah, like, you know, we don't always see videos about all the other stuff that you guys have to do to produce a book, you know, uh, all of the cover stuff, all of the formatting and the editing, like, you know, all of the, the intricate formatting stuff that goes into what you showed us on your pages, Maggie, like that, uh, you know, and the amount of time all of that stuff takes. So uh, that's why I like having this sort of Q&A interview type process where we get to um, have all that stuff come out. And like I said, it's, uh, I do this, you know, selfishly to learn more about what, what you all do. So, so thank you all, uh, you know, for, for always agreeing to be on these panels. And thank you for, to uh, Tanya, who uh, puts a lot of thought into putting together good panels you, with Tanya. good people Tanya. who will amazing. go off each other. Thanks for inviting me on. Yeah, Tanya's <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so we, we got maybe like 20 minutes if, if we want to talk about some different stuff. So because we have, uh, you know, a, a big diverse panel, is there uh, anything that you all specifically wanted to talk about that I haven't gotten to yet or any questions that you wanted to ask any of the other panelists? That was awesome. <laughs> no, the little toe beans. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so so I'll open up the floor. Is there anything you guys want to ask each other or, or want to talk about? I got distracted by the kitty paws. Sorry. Yeah, so did I. So did kitty paws always <laughs> derail us, but it's okay. DJ, is there anything that you want to know about the events since this is going to be your first one? Because I think I've done about five of them at this point. You're going to just put me on the spot. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and before here. you guys... Oh, sorry. Be Before you guys get into like all like the event talk, I'm so sorry, but I do have to run. I have to get some like at least like an hour of recording in tonight. So I hate to like leave early, but no, that's I all right. Have to get oh, some recording. I love you. Bye. It was so so nice Thank meeting you, all of you. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys all soon. Right. Bye. Yes, we'll, we'll see you later. We'll see you down in the comments. All right. Yes. Thank you. And, and yeah, you know, go go for two hours like we do. Like you, you know, anybody who has to run, feel free. Like it's, uh, you know, it, it's it's oh my not gosh, like we're they paying. changed the setting, and I literally don't know how to hang up. Okay, well, um, up here, there's like a power top button right to the top right for me. I don't know. Let me like, out. <laughs> it's a tiny little X at the top right. Oh, okay, it's in a different spot. It used to be in the square. And okay, sorry, I'm just. Oh. Mm, all right, bye. <laughs> there she goes. Oh, that just made my face. Oh huge. goodness! So, so yeah, what uh, you know, we've all we've all done, uh, we've all been to conventions and then all for events, DJ. So, uh, yeah, are there is there any questions we can help answer for you? Um. Yeah. So, like, what am I supposed? To, what am I supposed to do with my hands? Like, what do I do? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> like, I, I mean, okay. So, like, do I bring? Do I bring books? Yes. That, yeah. that sounds stupid. But, like, do I bring a lot of books? Do I bring, like, a couple? So, my best question so is to always bring more of your first in series than any of the others. So, I would suggest at least 10 of the first one and maybe three to five of the others. And then have a pre order form in case you sell out. Oh, okay. Nice. That's a good tip. I've never, uh, I, I, I have never actually, uh, sold out but uh you know usually the bookstores are ordering in the books uh for the ones i go to 
because uh, I, I was traditionally published. And of course, you know, don't hate me, but I did most of that before any publishing really got its foothold, you know, during COVID, I had all my contracts and all my books were, were already spoken for before then. Um, mm, awesome. But but I've sold out a few of the bookstores. But yeah, I, I had the luxury of just saying, hey, uh, you know, what you should do is you should go to the bookstore, even if you don't live here, pre-order from them, and they'll usually ship it to you. And sometimes they'll do it for free or they'll do it for really, for really cheap. But, uh, but yeah, for, for the independent authors who, uh, you know, I think that's something – that I would never think to say is, yeah, have a pre-order form, have them fill it out. And then, yeah, yeah you can, you can do that right on site. That's great. Well, you can always put the pre-order form up on whatever the site is that's promoting the event. Mm -hmm. And then okay. you can take the orders there, get paid for them. And as long as you're willing to ship, then ship. Obviously account for ta local tax and shipping costs. Right. But, um, uh, yeah, definitely do that. I, um, did Shameless last year and actually pretty much sold out. I was ill-prepared for the amount of people mm. that came at me. It was just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an outgoing person. Like I'm not an introvert in any means, but it was very overwhelming. If you have a PA or someone that you can take with you to help, bring them. Do not attempt to do it by yourself. Well, I'm actually taking my page, my narrator's actually the one going with me as my PA. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm not a, uh, I am the, when somebody thinks of like the old crabby writer <laughs> that hides out in his hut and just types, that's me. I am not a, um, me and people, I'm awkward and I, I get sweaty. So, you know, <laughs> um, I, and I say, I say awkward, <laughs> sweaty things. Cause so, hard. you know, um, they want to shake your hand. They're, they're going to ask for your autograph. You don't want to be all sweaty touching the books. Yeah. Mm. Tanya, <laughs> it's true. Okay. I'm a very sweaty person. <laughs> you, you know, Sorry. one thing I was going to say. Uh, I, I'm an introvert too. Like I can act extroverted and I do this live show and, and nobody believes me when I say that, you know, in real life, I definitely can be shy. Um, but, you know, but, but take time and, and go hide out in your room for, for an hour every once in a while when you start feeling that way and just, you know, be prepared, know that that's going to happen because you are going to be surprised at the amount of people who are going to be there who are going to look at you and be interested if they've ever heard you before, the amount of people who will know that you're going to be there and will come straight for you and have all these questions and be super excited and just be, you know, raring to go whenever you're just like barely getting your caffeine and, and trying to wake up and get acclimated <laughs> to the new surroundings. So um, yeah, make sure to block off time and prepare to go, uh, go to your room or, or go wherever and, uh, and, and recharge that, that battery if you're an introvert, because, uh, you know, that's something that uh, if nobody's told you that you are allowed to do that and that it's totally fine, a lot of people feel obligated to be down there the whole time and to absolutely, you know, talk to every single person who who wants a piece of your time. And, you know, it, it's it's an interesting position to be in because you are the the attraction and like, you know, you can look at that as the circus, you know, attraction, like, you know, but, but the, you are, you know, the person who gets to decide how much of your time to give and all of that stuff, be generous, but also be kind to yourself. It's a, it's a balancing act. Uh, Maggie has not talked in a while. So what, uh, well, you know, what, what sort of tips do you have for whenever you're at an event? Um, I have to really work on, um, like trying to be like happy and smile because I, the side of my head is shaved and I'm covered in tattoos head to toe. So yeah. I have resting bitch face and people find me unapproachable. That's and then when I open my mouth, they are like, I don't understand you anyway. So I'm like, mm. so I just try lots of yeah, smiles and right. <laughs> and I just like pick someone out and be like, Oh, I like your, I like your shirt or I like your shoes, you know, something that I like about them because it, it makes you talk to people. It makes you seem approachable, but also like you're engaging with a potential reader and they're like, oh, they were nice to me. And, you know, maybe another author hasn't 
been nice to them that they were excited to see or something. So you build that rapport with them. Mm -hmm. And that's really something like when I go as a reader, I, I kind of want to feel seen by people I want to go, you know, get their book from. And then they remember that and it really makes their experience better. Aww. Absolutely. That makes um, my experience better. <laughs> <laughs> to free up your hands, if you have, this is my other suggestion, which was also a lifesaver, to free up your hands and to have less paperwork with you. If you have an iPad, mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. what I got a stand and I just leave it on the table and I leave it open to my newsletter. So people can sign up to your newsletter yeah. when talking to someone. They're not just standing there twiddling their thumbs waiting to talk to you. They That's can, so smart. You. Or if you don't have an iPad before you go, do a printout of a QR code that people can snap yeah. on the way yeah. by. Yep. yep. Yeah, I definitely do that. Ooh, that sounds good that ideas. Up. It goes to my link tree, so they get everything. And, and if you and if you're doing your point of say uh, point of purchase sales, like if you have like a Stripe or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, and also maybe for your iPad too, um, portable rechargeable batteries, uh, yep. ba battery packs. You know, have those have a couple and have all the necessary cords to plug into stuff. Because uh, if you do stay down there for you know three or four hours at a time, let's say, uh, those are going to come in real handy for. Mm -hmm for your iPad, for, you know, for your, uh, for your devices, for your phone, if that's, you know, the Bluetooth, if that's how you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's going to be, there are going to be very few outlets and it's going to be a fight to get them. So just bring your own uh, battery packs and then recharge them in the hotel at night or at your house, if you're driving or wherever, wherever you're doing it. Oh yeah. No, I'm, it's, I'm driving. It's going to be like a 12 hour drive. So. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I'm driving to Kansas City for what is it? Flirt in Kansas City, this flirty in Kansas. 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 Yeah, I'm not going to be signing, but I'm going with my partner who's going to be hosting Cuffed in Chicago with me next year. Nice. So. But yeah, yeah. No, I think I'm actually because in 24, I'm I'm actually signed up for like three through anytime. Mm -hmm. I, I have mix Michigan. Maryland and Salem next year, too. Nice. Yeah, I'm doing Tampa with them this year. I have uh, Utopia Con in Tennessee and British Book Bash next year. Ooh. Are you going to England? Mm hmm That's awesome. I'm yeah. so jealous. So nice. it's, it's nice because my husband and my kids haven't been over there, and I'm from Scotland, living in the U.S. now. Um, so we just go back and see family. And then when I'm there, I can do okay. any events there. So it kind of is like awesome. That that's, is so cool. that's super fun. That's great. Well, we're coming up on about 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes left. So I want to give you all an opportunity to let people know where they can find you online other than uh, here on TikTok, you know, what, to, what website, where can they search for you? Uh, and, you know, because uh, we all want everybody down here to, uh, you know, patronize everyone on the panel. So uh, let's start with uh, DJ. <laughs> DJ, um, you can find me lurking around TikTok or Facebook. Um, DJ, other DJ Krimmer is everything. Um, I have a website, djkrimmer.com. Um, you can find my books there. Um and on Amazon, I am currently working on going wide. Uh, so you will be able to find them in other places as well in the summertime. Um, and you can find Closing the Distance and Fox on Audible now. So you can do that. Kat, I, uh, I actually reside in the 513, so I'm already here. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, um, so that's where you can find me. Awesome. Uh, D, how about you? I am on Kindle Unlimited. Um, my husband is throwing stickers at me. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, he's throwing our logo at me. Um, you can oh, also yeah. our website, um, which is, that's our logo from the Ashes LLC. Um, but the website Aww. is D Williams author.com uh, fairly simple um i'm also on linktree get all my information on there it's got 
my event schedule. It's got the sign up form for Cuffed in Chicago. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. It's all the same name. Um, but yeah, um, we are going to be putting up the photography and cover art form here fairly shortly. Ooh, all right. So. Yeah, excellent, definitely. excellent. That's so exciting. All right, Maggie. <laughs> um, I am across the board on all social media, author Maggie Dumbrock. Um, I write fantasy, dark fantasy um, about Greek retailings. Um, I have a website that is uh, www.magicofmdunbrock.com. It's a mouthful. Um, you can find uh, my schedule on there, the books uh, that I'm publishing this year. Um, if I remember to write a blog post, it'll be on there. Um, <laughs> and my Instagram has my link tree with all of the with all of the goodies on it that you can find. Um, I also have a Facebook group, uh, Maggie's Witchlings. If you don't know how to spell Maggie, look at my first name. It doesn't make sense. And it's uh, Maggie's Witchlings that you can join and do ARC stuff and a whole bunch of like interactions and fun things. So. All right. Gotcha. And uh, for me, you can find everything on ricktreon.com. Uh, my socials uh, don't, I don't know if any one of them actually uh, match each other. Uh, I'm pretty ancient. <laughs> and so I was a beta uh, person for both Facebook and uh, Twitter. Uh, so yeah, the, I just, I did whatever my, uh, you know, kind of college age self wanted to do on those two. <laughs> so, so they don't, the, they're not, so, but, um, but that's uh, ricktreon.com is a clearing house. Find the links to all my socials, uh, links to my books, my, uh, you know, my video courses that I have up there. And uh, if, uh, if we end up making a short film this year, I'm sure I'll post the video up there too for that so it's gonna yeah uh it's gonna be a place where you can find out all my stuff and uh uh this happened a little while ago but we got over ten thousand likes on uh this live uh which is always a Woo! fun milestone and thank you to everyone um you know we got all, we got thank a lot you. of gifts thank you to everyone who gifted us uh and everyone who was interacting down there in the comments i know that uh uh, Tanya and she reads, you know, had a great time. And, uh, you know, without them, like I said, they, we have enough people uh, commenting that, you know, we would never be able to keep up with all of them. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that that's great for us because so many people are watching and, uh, and thanks to all of you and uh, another wonderful show. Great panel. Uh, thank you so much to DJ, to D, to uh, Maggie and to Allie before. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see you next week, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central uh, here. And, uh, you know, always, uh, always so fun to talk with independent creators uh, in the book world. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thanks for us. us. Thank you All for right. everybody, gifts and everything. Yes, thank thank you. you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Yes, good night. And especially for those on the East Coast, I know it's about to be like 10 o'clock, so y'all get some rest. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for having <laughs> Bye, everyone.